Many people fall into the trap of spending time on non-essential activities. There is no clear vision of how their day should look like and what they're trying to accomplish. In this video, I'm going to show you the techniques productivity gurus use to help CEOs of big companies to organize their daily schedule and prioritize their activities. It doesn't matter whether you're a college student, working your 9 to 5 job, being self-employed or if you're a CEO of a big corporation with more than 5,000 employees. Understanding the fundamentals of organizing your daily schedule and prioritizing tasks is all it takes to become productive. I wrote my four self-published books while working a 9 to 5 job as an internet marketing consultant at an internet marketing agency in the Netherlands. Writing and designing, publishing and promoting these four books while working a 9 to 5 job is hard. I needed to organize my daily schedule and prioritize my activities like a time management guru and a productivity guru. I had no time to mess around if I wanted to make progress writing my four books. Let's take a look at two questions. The first one, how do you organize your daily schedule? And the second one, how do you prioritize your activities? So how can you organize your daily schedule? It's essential to clear your head of all the tasks you're storing in there. Your brain is not meant to store tasks. This is the first rule of being organized with your daily schedule. Please write the first rule down now. My mind is not meant to store tasks. You use your mind to come up with creative ideas to solve your problems. When there is an idea, you write it down so you won't have to store it in your head. The first step is to grab a pen and two pieces of paper or use a blank notebook. Both work equally well. Do you have two pieces of paper and a pen? Great. Let's continue. The next step is to write at the top of the first paper A tasks. On the back you write at the top B tasks. On the next piece of paper you write C tasks. On the back of the second piece of paper you write D tasks. You have now created four columns for your A, B, C and D tasks. Below A tasks you write important, not urgent. Below B tasks you write important and urgent. You write below C tasks, urgent but not important, and below D tasks you write not urgent and not important. You can put these pages to the side for now. We don't need them yet. The reason I started with this is that you understand where we're going with it. Your next assignment isn't something you can finish within a few minutes. It's also not something you can complete within one hour probably. So what am I telling you to do? Take a notebook or multiple pieces of paper and write down every single task you've stored in your brain. And I really mean every little tiny task. Your list may contain hundreds of tasks. It doesn't matter how much it is. If you only have 50, then that's okay too. Just make sure you have nothing stored in your head when done. The moment you finish dumping all your tasks on the paper in front of you, the next thing is to write down the second productivity rule and that's that you can never use your brain ever again as a storage room. You can use your mind to develop great ideas, but you can't store them inside them. When something comes to mind, you write it down on your list and that's it. It'll be a behavioral change for you that won't be easy. You need to be aware of not falling into bad habits after a few days or weeks. So coming back to your general list of tens or hundreds of tasks you stored inside your head, the next step is to organize them into the A, B, C and D columns. So what task is important to you but not urgent? Write those down in column A. Examples of these tasks can be cleaning up your email inbox. And I don't mean answering emails. I mean archiving those who don't need your attention any longer and moving the ones you must answer this week. Cleaning up an email inbox isn't urgent, but it is important to maintain a good overview. If you're the CEO of a big factory, an example of an A task can be to make time to talk to one of your employees. Ask how they're doing or how their new baby comes along if he or she recently became a parent. These little things aren't a big deal to you, but seeing the big boss take time out of the busy schedule means a lot. The same goes for prioritizing for your personal life. It's not urgent to call your father or mother to ask how they are. But is it important? 
Probably yes. These A tasks are not for nothing called A tasks. Tasks stored in this quadrant are the most important ones for having success in the long term. Remember, these are most important for the long term. The problem is that most people never would come to start on their A tasks. Most people only get to do their B tasks and sometimes even only spend time on C and D tasks. An example of a B task for an employee could be to finish that article you need to publish on your company's website today. It also can be sending your colleague an email because you need his input for that specific article you need to publish. It can also be finishing the paper or project that has a deadline or studying for your exams if you're a student. On a personal level, it can be household chores like emptying the dishwasher. So the next stop is C tasks. Here is where the real danger begins and where most people are going wrong. C tasks are urgent but not important to you. And I'm repeating it. These tasks are urgent to you but not important to you. An example of a C task can be receiving a text message from your fellow students asking for your advice for the paper they need to submit that day. You got interrupted going through your A or B tasks by a C task. You could have prevented the C task from interrupting you by turning off your phone for notifications when you're in your productive working zone. Another way to avoid this from happening is to turn off your phone altogether when you're in the zone. Another C task can be a coworker who comes by your desk to ask you for a favor. Instead of saying yes, you can politely decline by saying, sorry Joe, but I'm in the middle of something important and my own to-do list is already spawning more and more items and it's getting longer instead of shorter. I need to finish these before adding more to it. Hopefully you'll understand. There's a good podcast episode of Tim Ferriss called How to Say No. That'll help you if you find it hard to say no to people. I'll link to that podcast episode in the description below. Another example of C tasks is answering emails. Most emails are not important. Another example is text messages from friends. Most people spend most of their time working on C tasks. Answering emails, helping colleagues, doing favors for fellow students, or what have you all the while thinking they're working on important tasks. And you must understand that C tasks are often important to others, but not to you. And I'm not saying it's terrible to help other people, but you need to have a balance. First, make sure you make progress on your long-term goals and then help others if there's any time left. Also make sure to prioritize who you want to help. Do you want to make time for your colleague or your father or sister who needs help. For me, the choice is simple. Family is always most important to me. If there's any time left, I can maybe help others who are not that close to me, but if there isn't, then that's okay too. I can politely say no. Lastly, there is the D tasks. Time spent on these activities does not help you accomplish your goals and it isn't urgent. On a personal level, the activities can be browsing social media, watching television, watching YouTube videos without any clear goal, etc. On a business level, it can be spending days or even weeks designing a logo for your new YouTube channel without having any videos. Maybe you don't even like making YouTube videos and you could have figured that out much sooner if you just got started instead of creating a logo for days and weeks. Another one is a real life example from my girlfriend spending time on a D task. She's in her first year of a healthcare education and she's working on this paper where she spent like 30 minutes creating a beautiful cover design. So don't get me wrong, it's nice to have a cool cover for your paper but she's not learning to become a designer. She's in healthcare. The content of her paper is far more critical than having an elegant cover. In my opinion, she should have spent only a couple of minutes adding the essentials to the cover of the paper and then moving on to the report's contents. So before we ending this video, my final tip is to start your day working for at least one hour on your A tasks. Just one hour is enough to get started. After your first hour, you begin with your B tasks. When done with your B tasks, and if there is any energy left inside you, you can help out others and do some of your C tasks. When finished with your C tasks, for that day, you can chill and watch some television, scroll through your Facebook feed to see what your family and friends are doing, 
basically doing some D activities. So again, if you take away only one thing from this video, then please let it be that you know the definition of an A task. There are timestamps in the video description, so please go back to my explanation of the A tasks so that you're sure you understand it. Many people think they're spending time on A tasks when they're doing B or C tasks in reality. Please share in the comments what's the one thing you find the hardest. Is it not checking your phone every few minutes? Or is it saying no to people asking you for favors? Or is it something else? Let me know in the comments. Furthermore, if you're interested in building your business online, saving and investing your money so you can be financially free one day, then please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I save and invest 70 to 80% of my income to be financially free within 10 years, hopefully. You can expect two videos each week from me, so if you want to follow along, you're welcome to join the family. And remember, I always help family first. Lastly, please click the like button if you find this video of any value to you. If you didn't find any value in this video, then please let me know as well, as I would like to know whether or not I'm doing a good job here. Thanks for watching my video and maybe until next time.